Hey there, BookTube. Noah, everyone who reads it must converse. Today I'm doing a twofer, right? Um, so I'm talking about a, a very short and powerful work. This is Miss Lonely Hearts by Nathaniel West. I've never read Nathaniel West. Um, this is another copy, both of these put out by New Directions. <sighs> what a powerful little work. 58 pages for Miss Lonely Hearts. And very much a, a, psycholo a, a psychological exploration. You're thrown into the mind and into the experience of a guy who uh, is named Miss Lonely Hearts. We don't get his actual name. Miss Lonely Hearts is a newspaper column where they give advice, right? And he is the writer for that column. And you might be able to imagine the amount of pain and suffering that he has to read about uh, getting these letters from people who read his column that are asking for advice on how to on how to deal with their suffering and in their life you're thrown right into him in the middle of what seems to be an existential crisis he, he he's a very modern uh, figure and living in a city in a big city. And these kind of things, humility, um, suffering is just part of life, right? And the name of the game. And there's not a lot of care and not a lot of um, kind of humanity given to individuals. Nobody in the society in which he lives, in the circles where he lives, would ever put their sufferings out there on the table for others to comment on and to um, you know and a and ask for advice or something like this so there is an alienation there from for from for the individuals being able to actually be uh, friends and to love one another though this is miss lonely hearts job right to put advice out there and to write back to these very um, sad individuals that are going through a lot of pain. So he finds himself in a very unique position compared to everybody that's around him. All the people in his work life and even in his personal life, they don't understand the kind of place that he's in. In this book is a lot of uh, religious uh, uh, Christian imagery, the idea of God and Christ specifically as a savior figure is brought up and then immediately undermined all the time, as it would be um, in society, right? Why would you believe that? You know, antiquated, um, un, you know, useless um, philosophy and and. And Miss Lonely Hearts cannot find a place to sit in order to write and be of an, of, of an ongoing help to people. It's tearing him down. So we explore a lot of different avenues. Art, um, pain itself, um, some kind of escapisms, um, uh, moving out to the country, drugs things like this in order, you know, exploring those kind of things as are they valid enough to give um, somebody a, a, a foundation in which to be able to handle the world, to be able to handle life. And of course, um, they're not, right? It's said over and over that what is, what is able to handle and give somebody an, an idea of something strong enough to stand up against the pain and the suffering of the world and life itself is um, a Christ. But this kind of thing is just an, an, an empty image in a lot of this and very painful to see the grasping and the... In, the lengths that our narrator goes to, to find a, to try to find a way 
to have a foothold, to have something solid, a rock. All in all, this book is very shocking. This book is very, very um, hardcore, not for the faint of heart. In 58 pages gives you a lot to mull over. So I'm not going to touch on all of it, of course. It's it's uh, the experience of it is what it's all about. If what I've uh, said is enough to make you think, wow, I'd like to, you know, kind of see what he does with that, go ahead, just do it, because it, it's very, very cool. What it reminded me of is the first book by John Williams, the writer of Stoner. His first book is called Nothing But the Night. Nothing But the Night also explores in a deep interior kind of way and an, a, a narrator that is in a, a crisis mode and is suffering a lot. Miss Lonely Hearts is very much more aware, self-aware of his suffering than the narrator in Nothing But the Night. But both are written very, very well. It, it reminded me on a, on, a, on a writing level as well because a lot of poetry in, Mrs., in Miss Lonely Hearts poetic voice, images that serve to deepen your experience of what the narrator is going through. And it's just it's just a powerful work. It really is. It will be something that can be reread in a day, in, in one sitting, even. 58 pages, you know, you can read it with, uh, with, with one break, you know. I read it in two sittings taking my time with it and really letting it letting it kind of uh, seep in if I could. Uh, when it comes down to it, I I think that it it points in the right direction and the end is shocking, which I really enjoy uh, these kind of things. Reminds me of Flannery O'Connor in that way, where the ending uh, really just kind of gives you what you need for the story. Very well done. So, you see, I have a New Directions paperback here, and then a New Directions paperback here. I've seen another cover for the New Directions paperbacks, but I only need one copy. So if you've uh, lasted through the bulk, the, through the to the end of this, of me talking about it, I will be giving away this copy right here. So just uh, drop me a line, and we can, uh, and I'll give you an email. Find me on Instagram, maybe, or we'll figure it out, and I will send you this copy of Miss Lonely Hearts. In this is also um, a, a story called The Day of the Locust. I haven't read that yet. I'm going to read that one and then do a little something on that as well, probably. So, thank you very much, BookTube. Catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.